So sure. will this dip in oil derail the stock market rally as Washington appears to be in a holding pattern on policy issues, at least for now? Joining our closing bell exchange right now, David Bonson from Hightower Advisors is with us, the Bonson Group. Stephen Sarge Guilfoyle from TheStreet.com and Sarge 986 LLC is at Post 9. And Rick Santelli is at the CME in Chicago. And I've, I got two people on this panel who like energy stocks right now. Sarge, you were just telling me you bought some this morning, right? Oh, yeah, I've been nibbling today on this weakness. I, uh, I got out of part of my technology portfolio. I started nibbling on Schlumberger, on Valero, on Tesoro, because I think they're quality. And I even uh, speculate a little bit with Sanchez Energy. Now, I've made small purchases here. As I see how the dollar reacts to the Fed next week, I'll decide whether these are positions I want to stay in or if yeah. I want to add to them. David, you're saying you think energy is one of the most attractive areas going into the Trump era. Is that true no matter what the oil price is? It, it absolutely is. The, the thesis that we're talking about here is energy as part of his manufacturing job story that it becomes an incredible way. You notice in his speech last week, he talked about a sort of public-private partnership around infrastructure. This is an entirely private way to invest in infrastructure. The massive need that our national energy infrastructure has, our ability to export natural gas, there's a wonderful play here that is not crude oil price sensitive. Hey, Rick, we don't often talk at this point at time of day about the relationship between commodities and Treasury yields. So as oil goes lower here, and there's some, John Kildup was on our air today saying maybe he could see it going to $42 a barrel before this sell-off is finished. What do you think that would do to Treasury yields, which have been going up lately in anticipation of a Fed rate increase next week? You know, I, I think I'm going to take the same tactic that Dave has taken. I, just because the price of oil goes down, when, when you think that that's a major input cost to things like manufacturing, I think it's a positive, and it's an input cost on absolutely everything with regard to energy. So I think that energy is not necessarily the poster child commodity if you're trying to assess pricing pressures uh, in that arena. Uh, I think, for example, the profile of grains or other commodities or copper is not going to mirror that. This is really a unique situation, and I'm very optimistic there'll be an indirect correlation with the economy. The lower prices go in a Trump administration that likes oil, wants to export oil, natural gas, fracking that can turn on the switch, the fact that we're competing around the globe now. That's a good thing. And even though the price goes down, the indirect effects is I think it'll be good for the economy, not necessarily for all parts of the cottage industries, at least for the here and now relating to energy. But on a bigger picture, you know, rates right now, uh, we're, we're looking at the 30-year finally broke out, virtually the highest right. rate since the summer of 15. Tens are playing with that super important 260 level, really the, the area to pay attention to September of 2014. Tomorrow's number is huge. But how to put it in context, I believe rates are going up. But I also believe that after tomorrow's number, the people who bought the auctions this week will be happy as well. So I'm not so sure it's going to be a linear move straight from 260 and above to 3%, although I do think eventually that will be a big chapter in the book of interest rates. Very quickly, Rick, what number are you looking for tomorrow from the jobs report? I'm looking for about 230,000. Okay. Pretty healthy number. David, you mentioned that your interest in the energy space is not so much keyed off the price of oil. You've got names like Enterprise and Enbridge, which you think will continue to do well. Does the U.S. have the cost advantage? We can just keep pumping this stuff even as the price goes lower? Well, you have to remember that a significant amount of the revenues of those two names is not in crude oil. It is in natural gas. And the lower price of natty gas is creating higher volumes. These are volume plays. And so to me, I think it's a story of infrastructure need. If we want gas and oil to continue to be transported around this country by rail and truck, then we don't need more pipelines. But what the Trump administration's done from a deregulation standpoint is say, no, we're going to support this, this industry. It's job creating. It's environmentally superior. And ultimately, the economics are very attractive. So we love those stories, and we love those names, again, without a particular play on crude oil. And I would mm -hmm. add, hearing Rick Santelli say he's on my track is just something that is happening every day between Rick and I. We're on each other's track on all of these issues and more. <laughs> there you are. Hey, guys. Get, get you guys together for lunch sometime. Hey, Sarge, yes. broadening out just a bit, do you, th do you see 
the jobs number tomorrow moving this market one way or the other? It's been sideways for a few days now. No, the, they could give us 25,000 tomorrow and negative <laughs> wage growth, and they would go ahead with this wage hike. Uh, pretty much every member of the FOMC, they've all lined up like ducks. They've told us we're going to get a, a, an increase in the Fed funds rate, rate next week. They've told us we're going to get three or four hikes this year, which is really silly because you can't tell me we're going to hike in June if we get two months of really poor macro. So they really should take it one at a time. But I do believe these markets have priced in about three-eighths of a point on the uh, Yeah, you the think Fed they're wrong fund. about that, Sarge? Because, they, you know, you think the market's got this wrong by saying, hey, the data looks pretty good. They might go, you know, start to go once every meeting or every other meeting. You think it's ahead of itself? No, the market's not really ahead of itself. I, I think we've only priced in about an extra eighth of a point on the Fed funds rate. And we have the support of earnings. Let's not forget that. Earnings have been improving. Yes, valuations are high. But we are probably, if we can maintain some growth, I know GDP is just about awful for the first quarter, and it was awful in the fourth quarter. But let's face it, inventories are down to nothing. They're going to have to build them back up. The second quarter GDP is probably going to track a lot higher than the first quarter. Yep. I think we are going to grow into those earnings. I think the market has it about right here. Not when the S&P was at 2,401 on the day after the president spoke, but right here at 2,360, which is a major level, by the way. Yeah, right here is okay. We're, we're priced right. All right. Hey, guys, thank you all. Appreciate your thoughts on today's market action. Thanks, everybody. See you later.